Hello, I'm Jeff Kubiak with Poly Products, and this is the Poly Products heated tank system. This system is rated at 40 gallons per hour maximum. It'll run very comfortably at uh, 35, 20 gallons per hour. We like to be closer to the mid-range than the max. We do have larger systems if you need more than 40 gallons per hour. But this is the control panel. We're in test configuration. This unit is about to ship, and we're doing our, doing our final factory acceptance test. This is the control panel. We'll get into that in a little bit. Of course, this is the Poly Products ET3W evaporator. This is the heated tank. This one is uh, carbon steel. You have uh, carbon steel 304 or 316 stainless steel options with the gas fired unit. If you want to go electric or steam, you can also go with the polypropylene tank. The tank is seven feet long, four feet wide, three feet deep. Over here is the gas fired burner. This is a little over a half a million BTU gross uh, input. And it's got a fire tube welded into the, the tank submerged so that the, the hot gases ex exhaust through the tube and, ex and exhaust out through this pipe, uh, then eventually through the roof out of the building. The tube inside the tank is what makes the water hot, controlled by our control, by our control panel in conjunction with all the safety valves and controls that come standard with the burner. This heated tank system is configurable. This control panel can be mounted on any corner or even wall mounted. The pump can be mounted on different corners. We can make it fit the space you have available. This pump is going to deliver the 45 gallons per minute needed to the evaporator and the inlet. This pump is actually capable of delivering more than 45 gallons per minute. So we're using this ball valve as a throttle to make sure that we don't spray too hard or choke it off too much. We don't want to spray too little. That'll impact our evaporation rate. Because this has more gallons per minute capacity than we need, the system also has a T in the feed line so that we can also divert some flow back to the tank to create some agitation and make sure there's no hot spots. The outlet of the pump feeds into this pipe, past this T, into that ball valve of the evaporator. As it passes through the evaporator, collects on the bottom and drains out of that bulkhead fitting back into the heated tank. That return line must never be submerged. It has to breathe. This is a gas-fired unit. This burner is 550,000 BTUs. It's running on natural gas. We can also run on propane or liquid propane and some other fuels. Please call to specify. Here are some images of some, of some other heat sources, such as electric heaters in either carbon steel stainless steel, or titanium. We can offer steam coils in either uh, titanium or Teflon. This is the gas train to the burner system. It has a series of safety valves, including high pressure, low pressure. It has a, a, a pressure regulator, all of which is controlled and monitored by the fire eye. The fire eye is the brain of the burner. The fire eye is what talks to our control panel, control panel and gives us um, reports and takes commands. This burner is equipped with the optional air filter on the intake system. Normally this whole bezel is not, is not a standard item. This is an add-on option which provides you, a, if you're in a, a harsh environment, you may want to uh, consider having an inlet filter, but normally you would get just that little small opening as your, your combustion air inlet. Under normal situations, you just want to turn the system on and run it in automatic mode. Again, we are in test mode, so the leads are not permanently mounted, but here we have uh, the, the power switch should be on the on position. All of the individual control switches should be set the auto or on. If everything's okay when we hit system start, the system will start. The burner is not active yet. It takes a moment to purge air out of the burner system. And then it's going to uh, start the ignition process. Once we have confirmation that the burner is active, that light will go on. It takes about 30 seconds. Burner is now active. The three main components on this system is the blower for the evaporator, 
the feed pump for the evaporator, labeled here sump pump, and then the heater. Under normal operation, we would set each of these to auto and on and hit cycle start. But if you're testing, you can leave everything else to off and maybe just test the blower and put it to hand and let the blower run. You can also do the same with the sump pump. But note, if you turn the blower off, the pump also goes off. The pump is interlocked with the blower because we need the cooling effect of the blower to cool the solution down, down when it enters this evaporator. The temperature could be so high in the solution that it could do damage to the plastic of the evaporator if the blower is not on. So we don't let you turn the pump on without the blower being on. This is the temperature controller. Right now the green numbers are indicating we are set to 160 degrees. The system hasn't been heated up right now, so we're at 66.7 degrees Fahrenheit. 160 degrees is the maximum we could set the temperature. We can't go up any higher, but we can go lower. If you want to evaporate at a lower temperature, simply hit the down arrow button. Let's say we want to set it to 150. It's still flickering, and then we hit the set. It may still look like it's flickering on the video, but those are two solid illuminated lights. When you hit the set button, it locks it in. If you want to uh, experiment or you want to look at the over temperature set point, for example, we don't want to go uh, over 160 degrees ever. Right now there's a, a five degree trail. It'll, the alarm will follow the set point by five degrees. And we can see that by hitting the circle button and getting into the menu. These are all explained in the manual. But we want to go to alarm high temperature. Right now it's actually set to 2.9 degrees above the set point. So when it passes that threshold or when it gets to three degrees Fahrenheit beyond the set point, the high temperature alarm will sound. And we can, we can see this, we can lock it in if we change it. We can make it whatever we want. Again, I'm going to go back to 2.9 and then hit set and it locks it in. Hitting set again goes back to the normal display. So now I'm going to, head, I'm going to set it down to uh, uh, 63 degrees and the alarm will sound. Just going to take a moment or 61.7, you'll see what happens. Hit set, lock it in, we're more than three degrees over temp. We sound an alarm, beacon light is flashing, the operator can come over and see what's going on. If he wants to silence the alarm while he thinks about it, he hits the button labeled alarm silence. Now he can evaluate and say, oh, I'm over temperature. Whatever reason caused that, maybe somebody hit the buttons just like I did. So we're going to put that back up to something above our actual temperature. We'll make it, we'll make it uh, 80 degrees. Set, locks it in. Now we still have to acknowledge that we knew it was over temperature by hitting over temperature reset. That light goes off. This is the level probe uh, system. Uh, this cable is left intentionally long so we can service it. These are just test leads so we can power it up before uh, um, it leaves the system part of our factory acceptance test. So this is not the normal. But this probe can be removed so that you can service, clean, clean these probes. There are four positions, five probes. This is the common probe. It must always be in the solution for these others to work. When this probe is exposed, that means the level is lower than this probe. This is the low level alarm. This probe is a common probe. It's used to turn the pump on, the refill pump on. So when this pump, when this probe is exposed, the pump comes on. And it'll come on until this probe gets wet. This probe gets wet, it shuts the pump off. So the level stays between these two probes. If for some reason the level goes higher, it'll get this probe wet and that'll be our high, high level alarm. It'll shut the system off and sound an alarm. We can test the probes by just dipping them in the water without the bracket. So the common goes in, the low level uh, probe is uh, now submerged, pump on, pump off, and now I'm about to submerge the high level alarm. And if you fix the problem and the level is now appropriate, 
the problem goes away. The heated tank system has a sloped bottom. It's a gentle slope. That's the high side and it slopes down towards the drain which is on this side. The drain is what would feed the, the filter press if you purchased a filter press with the system. If you found this video helpful and informative, please subscribe and hit like.